Good evening. Welcome to Northwest Tonight with Annabelle Tiffin. Our top story, life for Brianna's killers, as it's revealed one of them was transferred to her school after drugging another child. And I think that as a parent, you would never imagine that another child that your child's met from school would be capable of doing such a thing. Scarlett Jenkinson will serve at least 22 years, Eddie Ratcliffe 20 for her horrific murder. You both took part in a brutal and planned murder which was sadistic in nature and where a secondary motive was hostility towards Brianna because of her transgender identity. We'll be live from Manchester Crown Court. Also tonight, Cheshire's Police and Crime Commissioner faces calls to quit over comments about short skirts. It's totally inappropriate to comment on, A, the clothing um, that young girls are wearing, but also, in a way, victim-blaming them. Do you love where you live? Harry does. So where has he invited us to visit? And it's been a tale of two halves today. For many, skies like this, grey overcast. For others, beautiful spells of sunshine. How are we set for the weekend? Join me at the end of the programme. I'll give you all the details. Brianna Jai was lured to her death by someone she thought was her friend. Today, a judge named her killers for the first time. Scarlett Jenkinson and Eddie Ratcliffe were told they'll serve at least 22 and 20 years for her brutal murder. The BBC can now reveal that Scarlett was transferred to Brianna's school after drugging a younger pupil. Well, our reporter Katie Barnfield has been following this case and she joins us now from Manchester Crown Court. Katie, tell us more about what the judge said today. Well, Annabelle, the judge, Mrs Justice Yip, told the court earlier that although Brianna's life was short, she made a big impact and acknowledged that her family's loss was unimaginable. She said the sentencing of the two teenagers responsible for her murder was complicated because although they are children, the murder was brutal. She said Scarlett Jenkinson had enjoyed her part in the killing, that she told stories and blurred the lines between fantasy and reality, meaning she couldn't believe anything that she said. She she said she had enlisted Eddie Ratcliffe, who supported and encouraged her, and that he displayed hostility towards Brianna because of her trans identity. Scarlett Jenkinson, she said, was motivated by a deep desire to kill. One of the most difficult aspects for Brianna's family, though, was knowing that she was someone Brianna considered a friend. Scarlett, this is what I've got to say. Yeah. At this moment, because the information I have received. You were under arrest on suspicion of murder. Obviously the moment wrong. Brianna Jai's friend was arrested for her murder. How come I'm a suspect? How come you're a suspect? Because I'm the last person at scene, or is it? I don't know. Scarlett all Jenkinson all was just 15 wrong. years old when she and her friend Eddie Ratcliffe you, Eddie? planned and executed Eddie, Brianna's murder, brutal right? killing, luring her out and attacking her with a hunting knife in the middle of the afternoon. At the time, it felt like it was the worst possible. Um, a scenario that could have happened. It was the worst possible person that could have done it to her. I felt that I could trust Scarlett because Brianna clearly trusted her as well. And I think that as a parent, you would never imagine that another child that your child's met from school would be capable of doing such a thing. On the 11th of February, 2023, Brianna Jai's body was found here in Culture's Linear Park in Warrington. She was discovered by dog walkers on this path, about half a mile from the entrance to the park, close to this bench. She had been stabbed 28 times. Brianna, who was transgender, was described by her mum as witty, fearless and strong. But she was also vulnerable, suffering from severe anxiety, something her killers took advantage of. After the pair were arrested, their phones were seized, what investigators found on them was chilling. Thousands of WhatsApp messages discussing plans to murder Brianna and other children. If we can't get him tomorrow, we can kill Brianna. I want to stab her at least once, even if she's dead, just because it's fun. 
when I was in the trial, I could see the way that they were both behaving and I could tell that there was no remorse and um, of regret. Beforehand, I felt like that maybe there would be some form of rehabilitation, but clearly it was calculated and I completely lost any sympathy that I had for them. Brianna had never met Eddie Ratcliffe, marked here with a Y, before he turned up at the bus stop with Scarlett Jenkinson to meet her on the day they were to kill her. But she and Jenkinson, who's marked with an X, had been friends for a few months. The three walked together to Colchester Linear Park, Brianna not knowing her friend was luring her to her death. Scarlett Jenkinson had first met Brianna here at Birchwood Community High School. We were asked by a local high school if we would take Scarlett um, on a placement due to the fact that she'd brought cannabis edibles into schools. At some point between November, December, um, their paths crossed in the inclusion room. In terms of Scarlett, there were no red flags. She came across as very polite, um, she was very quiet. There was nothing that indicated that this was going to happen. How did you feel sitting in court and seeing some of those WhatsApp messages and the content of them and comparing that to the person that you met? Yeah, it's, um, it's surreal. It's surreal. Um, and it, it really makes you question everything, really. The BBC has learned that Birchwood Community High School didn't know the full details of the incident involving cannabis edibles. In fact, Scarlett Jenkinson had given them to a younger child who didn't know what they were taking and who then became seriously ill and the police were called. Cultures High School told us they are now working with Warrington Safeguarding Partnership on an independent review which will examine the circumstances surrounding the move. Sentencing the two teenagers, the judge, Mrs Justice Yip, lifted the restrictions that normally keep child defendants anonymous. Both were given a life sentence. Scarlett Jenkinson to serve a minimum of 22 years and Eddie Ratcliffe a minimum of 20. She said Brianna's transgender identity was a factor in her murder. Scarlett, I have concluded that the primary motivation for Brianna's murder was your deep desire to kill. The messages reveal your fantasies and show your sadistic motives. I find also that you, Eddie, were motivated in part by hostility towards Brianna because she was transgender. Brianna's mum, Esther, says she doesn't want their families to be blamed. When the verdict came through, um, I saw how devastated the mum was, one of the mums were, and it kind of made me feel that that's how I felt when I found out the news about Brianna. Um, because it is true that we've, we've, all lost, we've all lost our children. Esther told the court she has never felt such grief as losing Brianna. She wants her daughter to be remembered not for how she died, but for the person she was. Katie Barnfield, BBC Northwest Tonight. Well, throughout the trial, the two teenagers could only be referred to as girl X and boy Y because of their ages. But today, the judge decided to lift the anonymity order and allow them to be named. This is something that happens in only the most serious cases, as Ian Haslam explains. It's unusual, but certainly not unknown. Scarlett Jenkinson and Eddie Ratcliffe's anonymity was lifted because their case was deemed so shocking and therefore exceptional to the general rule that children appearing in courts can't be identified. Sir Richard Enriquez prosecuted the killers of Merseyside toddler James Bulger in 1993. As 10-year-olds, John Venables and Robert Thompson abducted James from a Bootle shopping centre before murdering him. He says naming Brianna's killers is the correct decision. There is much, much good to follow if this, these cases are examined very fully uh, and the public know what went wrong in that particular family. Only then can we ask ourselves the question, could this happen in our family? Because at the moment, we don't know what went wrong. But not everyone's in favour of courts identifying young offenders. The naming of them and the shaming of them uh, is a barrier to rehabilitation. Um, we know that it, it creates troubles for their safety um, in prison, but then also upon release, because these are children at the end of the day 
um, and, and they need to be able to be given the space to grow um, and to, to move beyond their crime. Warrington Borough Council says it's now carrying out a safeguarding review into all aspects of the case. I think it's a devastating day, particularly for, for, for everyone involved, closely involved in it. For, for the town as a whole, it's something I need to say. It's a legacy that's going to be a poor legacy that's going to be going on, on for many years to come. The review will examine why Scarlett Jenkinson was moved to a new school where she met Brianna Jai after drugging a younger pupil with a cannabis suite. Birchwood Community High School has told the BBC it wasn't aware of the incident that happened at Culcheth High. Jenkinson later tried to poison Brianna before murdering her. So that information was out there, wasn't it? That will be a part of the review, what could have been shared, what should have been shared, and then learn from that to make sure things are shared more quickly and relevant information is passed on to, to the bodies that need to have it. How big a concern is it, though, for the council that that information wasn't shared? Obviously, it's a big concern for the council. That's why, we're, that's why we're going through the review, to make sure things like this don't happen in the future. Could the outcome have been different? Have we done something differently? Or have the skills done something differently? So we need to sort of look into that. It would be unfair for me to say, this should have happened, that should have happened. Next weekend will mark a year since Brianna died. Many people come to this park every day to enjoy the nature and the tranquility of the surroundings. It's peacefulness personified, entirely at odds with the horrific events here of almost a year ago, events which the community will never, ever forget. Everyone's kind of shed a tear over it at some point. People that live kind of close because it's such a sad thing. Um, and every time I go past, can sometimes just say like a little prayer and things like that. It's just ruined so many people's lives, of the whole community as well. You know, you, you walk along here, which should be a, a place where you can come and have a walk, bring your kids for a walk, and are you, are we, are you ever going to do it again? You know, it makes you think, oh, I'm not going to go in there because of what's happened. It's just awful, really awful. Ian Haslam, BBC Northwest Tonight, Warrington. Well, today the judge also paid tribute to the bravery of Brianna's family. Her mum, Esther, has now raised over £50,000 for her campaign in Brianna's memory, Peace in Mind, aiming to train one teacher in mindfulness in every school in the country. I've spoken at length to Esther for our documentary about this tragic case. The big cases killed in the park will be coming to the BBC iPlayer tonight. Annabelle. Katie, thanks very much indeed. Well, let's get some of today's other news now. And a woman who drove...